What do you get when you cross the most powerful fantasy sword with the most powerful grease cutting agent? This could cut through a block of cheese. Hi internet, I'm Steve and this is Raffo. Welcome to the Cosmere Connection series, where we find the this in your favorite this. Today we're digging into Dawn Shard, the novella that takes place just before Rhythm of War. Spoilers mostly for the Stormlight Archive, but with minor mechanics from Mistborn and Warbreaker. Before we jump in, when this novella was released, we had already gotten one Stormlight novella, and another had been teased. Lift is an edge dancer. Rock is a horn eater. So it makes sense that Risen, the main character of this story, would be a Dawn Shard. It's right there. Dawn Shards are first mentioned in Way of Kings, known to bind any creature voidish or mortal. In Oathbringer, the Stormfather says the Dawn Shards were used to destroy Ashen, the original planet for the humans. And Brandon has said that Dawn Shards actually predate the Shattering itself. We'll get to that. Connections! Yalb's back! Of the entire crew of the Wind's Pleasure, only Yalb and two others survived. They find the First Dreams, the ship from the Soulcaster Kaza's interlude in Oathbringer, and Yalb brings it home. Finders keepers! Two months later, it's been two years since Risen fell off a crab in Words of Radiance. She's got a definitely human porter named Nickly, who sees with real eyes, and has white tattoos over scar tissue and not seams where millions of tiny bugs fit together like a human-shaped horror movie jigsaw puzzle. It's really impressive that he can lift heavy things without deforming in any way. No bones would make leverage difficult. Starting with chapter one, and throughout the entire rest of this book, Risen very clearly illustrates the ableism, microaggressions, and well-intentioned yet disempowering helpfulness that the disabled community experiences every day. Ah, to be free of the but why. They've finally come up with one of these, which on Earth were first seen in about the 1850s. Before that, they were basically all pushed by someone else. Talik, the son of Ral Na, king of Relu Na, comes to visit. He tells us about why there are Larkins in the Reshi Isles. Pretty far away. When Aimea fell, the Na Alind, a family among the great shelled gods of the Reshi, took in the last of the Larkin. Great shells do not think or speak like people do, and the ways of our gods are strange, but best we can tell, there was a promise among them, to protect these, their cousins. In order to help Chiri Chiri, the island said to take her home. Risen then visits Urithiru, Urithiru. The Alethi are experimenting with ropes and pulleys off the side of the mountain. Vistum told Risen what it's meant to be for. We'll find out in Rhythm of War. Navani wonders if the Thalans use Larkin to adjust stormlight levels in gemstones. Raffo, Navani, Raffo. The Lopin meets Talik and King Ralna, described as a short man with graying hair and firm pecs. Our first official trans radiant. A dust bringer, though with what happened with Malata, Lopin asks him to keep that quiet. The most experience Risen has had with Radiance is with Renarin, the solemn, quiet man who couldn't heal her legs. Yep. She shouldn't have to make jokes for others to feel comfortable. Interestingly, conjoined rubies behave according to the holder's perception, not absolute movement. They find the wormy grain. Are they actually hordlings? The hexy might be disappointed if their vegan grubs disappear. The sleepless are very similar to Chandra, obviously shapeshifters, functionally immortal, but also reckoning generations numerically. Nickly is a 24th. They imply that Arklo somehow prevented the first dreams from sinking. How? Rua told Lopin that aluminum will block a shard blade. We haven't seen Rua ever actually speak, but Lopin understands him. The Horn Eaters trade for aluminum off-world. It'd still be pretty expensive at this point, prior to Mistborn Era 2. Unless other soulcasters? I don't know. Lopin thinks the colors of Stormlight taste different. Cord can see Spren, like Rock. Lux Spren are trailing the ship. Stay tuned for my Mandra theory. I love hearing Huyo talk so intelligently in her Dazian. Dude's smart, but we underestimate him because he doesn't speak Alethi. The first time it happens is kinda whiplashy, probably intentionally. The Spren seem to fear aluminum. It may shield them from the thoughts of their other half. A big chunk of Huyo and Lopin's radiant stipend goes to Rod's family, who was killed during the Battle of Narek. Santhid are said to improve the moods of those around them, magnifying peace and confidence. Rioting, somehow? Aquatic Kremlings are called ceilings. Risen's meeting axes is mentioned, along with the Gloom Dancer and Sea Hags? Risen talks about the fused Lightweaver like Vistum wasn't there. 
but he was the one who got slashed open and locked into the gemstone vault. Probably just an oops on Brandon's part? Nickley talks about the riches of Imea. Fabrials, creatures that could stop Shardplate and drain Stormlight. The Kaza interlude in Oathbringer says Soulcasters would originally come from Akina. Imea wasn't supposed to exist. A wasteland artificially supported by magical means. The Horn Eaters have detailed knowledge of Sleepless, which are apparently associated with Luxpren, called Apaliki Tokoa'a in Unkalaki. Huyo says, middle bread taste good, wet fingers taste good. Dawn Shard was published in 2020. Lightyear came out in 2022. So is this a secret Cosmere reference? Juicy fingers. That's the best part. Nick Lee finds Blackbane in Kord's things. There are other poisons on Roshar, right? Lopin says Queen Yasna would be able to spot a fused Lightweaver, probably by peeking into Shadesmar. Nick Lee's got a cookbook with notes about human food preferences. The first Dreams cook was a reshy looking woman, but we can't really say for sure that they aren't the same hive mind. Probably different, but maybe the cookbook is from her? Brandon does like those tiny connections. Heading through the storm around Akina, the bags leaking oil are an actual thing. Storm oil. It's crazy interesting. The Horn Eaters' only shards belong to Rock, Amaram's plate, and Helleran's blade. Kord admits they have a perpendicularity. Her grandmother was warned about the sleepless by Lunu Anaki, Hoyt. Kord's full name, which is a poem about a wedding band, is Hualinam Lunanaki Akilu. Hoyd's Unkalaki name is almost in the middle there. Significance? Spren strengthened Rock's arm when he drew the Bow of Hours in the peaks. Still waiting on that Horn Eater novella. They get to the Dawn Shard room, which has murals of people going through perpendicularities. The actual Dawn Shard mural is of a sun being shattered into four and then 16 pieces. Though that relationship between Dawn Shard and Shard Shard isn't necessarily literal. This is also the most information we've ever gotten on the shattering. She swore she could feel the heat of that sun burning, washing over her. It was not angry, though she knew it was being ripped apart part like a person on some awful torture device. She felt something emanating from it. Resignation? Confidence? Understanding? This feeling of distant heat from an unknown sun is remarkably similar to that one unexplained vision of Dalinar's at the end of Oathbringer. Larkin, Lancerin, are also called the Guardians of Ancient Sins. The Dawn Shards were used to destroy the human's previous world. Is that the sin? Change. Sleepless bred with Larkin, adopting their stormlight-eating abilities. Nickley sailed with Longbrow over 400 years ago, for whom these straits are named. The giant grub thing on the beach is actually a hordling, not just tiny boys. The Horn Eaters made treaties with other gods. The ancient pact of the Seven Peaks? Huyo swears his third ideal and makes a frosty glyph like Kaladin. Why do some people get that and others don't? There are 24 sleepless, 20 loyal to the first, Yelamaisen, and four who aren't, including Arklo, though he's not a true traitor. In fact, let's talk about Sleepless. They have seen the ends of worlds, plural, and vowed to never let such an awful event happen again. They're not native to Roshar, and have been confirmed to exist on multiple planets by Brandon, though we haven't found out where they're originally from. The first Sleepless Horde on Roshar had Hordlings that were more spider-like, though through selective breeding they can eventually change their appearance to resemble local fauna. Or, of course, imitate human body parts. Humans are made up of trillions of cells, individual living things, and collectively function to survive, even store memories. Sleepless hordlings are similar in that way, just bigger. There are evil forces hunting the Dawn Shard. The fused or something more? Dawn Shards can be used to basically supercharge surge binding, which itself could be a catch-all term for investiture use. Was a Dawn Shard used to create the Dawn Cities? Those like Kolinar, Sisemelex Dar, and all the others that Cub Sol shows off to Shallan with cymatics? The six big Larkin skulls roar with Chiri Chiri, accompanied by a gust of Luxpren. Theory. 
If Larkin, and to a larger extent Lancerin, feed off investiture, then it would make sense that they're more invested, which would mean when they die, they'd stick around in Shadesmar for potentially a long time. What if the cognitive shadows of Lancerin became the Mandras? It's just the next stage in their life cycle. Chirichiri needed to bond a Mandra to keep growing in order to break the square cube law, like chasm fiends. Risen specifically calls the Dawn Shard a command. Nick calls it the will of a god. The most powerful forms of surge binding transcend traditional mortal understanding, Nickley said. All their greatest applications require intent and a command, demands on a level no person could ever manage alone. To make such commands, one must have the reasoning, the breadth of understanding, of a deity. And so, the Dawn Shards, the four primal commands that created all things. And then, eventually, they were used to undo Adenalsium itself confirmation that the Dawn Shards were used to off an Alsium. There are Unkalaki songs of when the Dawn Shard came through the pool, meaning it happened after humans were on Roshar. Well established. Risen is now going to be training the Sleepless how to be human, so we're probably going to see a lot more of them. I wonder if that training has been passed on to other... Chiri Chiri is the third confirmed surviving Larkin. Have we seen the others? Nails got one, and there was a dead one that Vistum got. The Mandras of Aimea are smaller and more potent than other breeds, so there are different breeds of Spren. Interesting. Epilogue. Lopin swears his third ideal in the least dramatic way possible. The Stormfather seriously has some cheek. Risen's tea tastes extra good. The sun's extra bright. Colors extra vivid. She's super invested now. Probably equivalent to the fifth heightening at least, which is 2,000 breaths. That might be difficult to hide from the right people. And that's Dawn Shard! Risen has become one of the most important people in the Cosmere because of her level of investment. If you want to become more important to the Cosmere not, you can do the same and increase your level of investment on my Patreon. Thank you to Doug, Matt, Steve, Alekthar, and Data Gremlin for reaching the fifth tier. Like with Heightening, the higher you go, the more perks you get, like early access to my videos, research notes, future scripts, and exclusive merchandise. An updated timeline of the Cosmere is coming soon. If you haven't seen my first one based on the five scholars, it's available right here for you to watch and find out. Vision then, vision, goodness.